Here we are, part two. I, I have to get it upholstery ready, and uh, I'm just going to staple down the edge here that I, ca I can't get at this because of the way it's manufactured. So I'm just going to make sure that that doesn't flap back on it. I wanted to show you how we're going to take care of that edge that came off on us. And it's very simple. You're going to take some cardboard tacking tape because this is not a structural problem. This is aesthetics. So you got, what you're going to do is you're going to take your, you can use your scissors for this or you can just cut this. It doesn't matter. I'm going to take one. Scissors might give you a sharper edge. And I'm going to, I'm going to just get it in there, anchor it like that to the corner. Just filling in this hole with my cardboard tack tape. That's it. It's just cosmetic. It's going to cover that up nicely. That's it. Okay, I want to stress something. You know, we, sometimes we hear from uh, other professional upholsters who say, oh, he's reusing the material, or, you know, he's not doing that right, or whatever. But um, a lot of times, people don't know the backstory about how, when you're talking to a client, like this particular client, she's, she's, a, she's a, an accomplished pianist, and she, and she does not want this changed. She loves the filling. Do not change the filling, she said. Okay, but I need to work the filling in order to, to get it upholstered. So, and, and we restyled it because she didn't want the buttons, but she wants to keep the filling. So we're challenged that way. So that's the backstory. So anybody watching this, now, now, so a lot of upholsters would just put a new piece of foam in this. Fine. You know, but if your client wants that, your client wants that. But my client wants it the same. So they've got this uh, beautiful, you know, uh, it's like a latex that's underneath here. It's a really heavy latex. And I think that's partly what she likes. It just it just keeps her flat on the you know playing the piano. She doesn't want to be you know like feel like she's she's uh, floating back and forth. So that's the bottom layer which I will reuse. Um, I don't think I even have to staple this down because it really stays put. Uh, it's the top layer that I had a little bit of a problem with. And it's polyurethane. Now you might say, why doesn't he use another one inch polyurethane? Well. Again, I don't want to change this out too much, and I want to be honest with my client and say, tell her exactly what I did. Um, and that is that I didn't change the integrity of this piece at all. But I got a problem because it had buttons in it. Look, it has these buttons, so it's little indentations. Now, one thing that you can try to do is steam these out if you have a steamer on your iron. Sometimes foam will steam out, but this, did, this, this uh, I don't think will. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to flip, I'm just going to flip this over because on, the, on this side it's perfectly flat. So, uh, but now that I did that, I, I noticed that one side, just one side, needs to be trimmed just a little bit. And I do need to add one thing to this, and that's Daycron. But I don't want to put too much on. I do not want to put too much Daycron on. So let me just grab my pair of scissors. Just going to trim this side up just a teeny bit. So this, this little job actually is turning into a very challenging job, and I'm kind of under the gun. I can't take too long on this. Um, so, so now I'm ready. To, I need to put a cover on this, though, you know. Uh, so I have a piece of Daycron ready to go. So what I'm going to do, it's not a thick piece of Daycron. It's a half-inch Daycron, so I don't even know if she's going to feel the difference. It's just going to only enhance the look of the, of the, of the velvet. So I'm going to do, I'll show you this in a minute, but I'm stapling on the side of this wood, not on the bottom. I'll show you why I'm doing that in a minute. So I want to show you where I'm stapling. I'm stapling right in here, not on the bottom. It'd be easy to staple on the bottom, but <coughs> you don't want to bring a lot of bulk uh, along that bottom edge. Manufacturers love to take padding like this, be careful take padding like this and, and just staple everything underneath because it's easy to do that. Oh, I'm loving this edge. It's flat like a piano bench should be. I'm really actually liking this now. This is great. This is great. My clients appreciate that I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to save the environment. I'm trying not to, you know, put too much into the landfill if we can reuse things. I call myself a restorative upholsterer, by the way. Um, that means that I like to reuse as much, within reason, of the old, of the material that's already on the pieces. When I talk to my clients about this, especially in this part of the country, you know, they're, they're really into recycling and they get it right away. I, I would encourage all upholsterers out there to do what I do and try to, um, you know, 
the industry loves to just rip things down to the frame and just put all new polyurethane and everything. That includes uh, pieces with springs and horsehair. Man, I, I try and carry reuse as much as you can. It, it's not going to affect your bottom line either. I, I think um, it, yeah, it's a little bit more labor trying to work all the materials, sure. But you might make it up on the other end of the new materials, buying new materials. Okay, so now I want to show you. I left the corners unstapled for a reason. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this right at the edge. I'm going to show you this. I'm just, I just have to look at this while I'm doing it. I can't do one. I'm going to do this and show the camera. Watch. Or right along the edge there. Look at that. Yeah, I got a nice edge. But um, the edge, when I say a nice edge, the, 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 fill, the padding's just coming a little bit over the edge. It's almost like a feathering effect. So we need something to protect the corner of that, the edge of that, that's for sure. So you don't want to trim over the edge, above the edge, I mean. So I get this done. Actually, it's turning into a fun project. When I first looked at this, I said, oh no, I was dreading it, actually. The first part of it was, how am I going to take that apart? I've never seen one before, though. It was, it was easy. So now we're ready to upholster this, start upholstering. I have my cover already. I have my fabric marked front. The front, it's a velvet. So I see, I see a little bit of a damage there. That I'm going to try to get your velvet will come to you um, pretty much in all different different um, conditions. I don't know if you could see roll marks on the camera, but I see a fold, and I see right now. I'm I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to use this piece. So I'm going to try something before I start upholstering. I don't like these. These are unusual marks. There are some marks that are natural to velvet, like the roll marks. But then I see something. I don't know what it is. It's a, it's a mark, but it's, I'm going to just try something very quickly on this. I'm going to try to take a spray that we have in our wisp broom, which we have. See, another problem came up. It's not going smooth as smooth as I would like it, but... Let's just see. If this doesn't work, we're going to have to cut another piece. But that's okay, because I think I have enough fabric. So we're just going to spray this with this called a spring mist. And we'll see if that comes out. That's just a, another, just an unnatural. Yeah, I, think that, I think that came out pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, so I, I like the way that that people are going to ask, what's spring mist? That's magic. <laughs> it's actually, I think it's just, they don't tell you on in the ingredients, it's a, it's a to the trade um, spray that we get. There's alcohol definitely in it, but I don't know what else is in it. It's probably a perfume of some sort because it doesn't smell too bad. And it doesn't affect 99% of the fabrics, it does not affect in a negative way. There's always that 1% though. So this um, came out good. It was just I wanted to make sure that the marking on that wasn't an unnatural marking. Everything else to me is like, you know, naturally velvet marks, especially a cotton velvet, which this is. This is actually called, um, I think they call this an, um, there's a name for this, Iconic Blue, I think, or something like that. Ionic, Ionic Blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin tack one, you know, if you've seen pin staple one side, I'm going to do this without turning the, without turning this over. So be careful when you do this. You always want to wear safety goggles again, like I, I've said in my other videos. If you're using tacks, you'll be pin tacking. You'll see my other videos, you know what that is. It's not a permanent tack. I'm going to go along the, the whole length first, right? I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to stretch it a little bit by maybe bringing it over like this, stretching it just a little bit, and then pin, pin stapling this side. And notice I do my two-way stretching. Um, you know, again, if you take the online class, you see a student doing this much slower, and uh, people say, look, he's so fast. That's not necessarily good for you guys te learning. So with the online classes, that I think they're the greatest bargain. And they're really cheap. They're only 50 bucks. I think what you do is you get you get it slowed down. You get uh, you know an apprentice asking questions like, "Oh, please," they'll say, "Please slow down." Or, oh, how did you do that?" And <clears throat> I don't necessarily answer these questions as I'm upholstering. It's 
much different on you. These, these are much different. So now I'm going to stretch one side a little bit and I'm going to pin staple one side. I'm going to get three staples in here. And I'm going to go to the other side. Again, pretty much all down. Um, not tight. Okay, this is just the initial staple. Okay, and it, and, it's, and it, it, keeps, it keeps my fabric stationary. So that I, I need to turn this over at some point, which I'm going to do now. I'm going to go to back to the opposite side, or the first side that I started, right? And now I'm going to be concentrating a little bit more on my stretching. Okay, and then I have to do something else. So see how that marks? Can't do anything about that. Don't worry about it. We'll take our little magic spray and spray it, but it's underneath the piece, so don't worry about it. So now I want to be stapling in here so that my other piece goes over that. See, that's the tricky part, right? So I'm, it's, it's only because I'd be stapling here if it wasn't the fact I can't get this off. It's going to be a little tricky getting my staples, and I'm stretching this at the same time. Tricky job. I have to admit, I'm using a lot of my skill, my knowledge, in order to t stay, you know, stretch this the way I want it stretched and stapling in an unnatural way on that wood on that wood board. It's really a tough job, actually. So we're going to do is stretch that two-way stretch that to that point, and then get that stapled this way. I'm going to take my spring mist and go over the whole thing and get all those out. Okay, now that's done. Okay, I'm going to come to the other side. If you want, you can trim this up. Just trim this up a little bit. Not much, though. I don't want to just like that. Okay, come to this side. Notice I'm doing one half side at a time, right? I'm not doing the whole side. These are supposed to come out, if you do it right, these are supposed to come out fairly easy. Okay, now I'm going to do one half side with the two-way stretch that way and that way. I'm going to hold it up like this, staple it. And I'm feeling my edge along here, which is really nice. I'm, I'm pretty much doing this blind here now. Um, I'm going to lift this side up just to show you. Oh, it's coming out. I need to stretch this side. So I'm doing two-way stretch that way and this way. Oh, we got a challenging fabric with this velvet, I think. It is challenging. Staple that in. And I'm going to trim this. Do the ends, and then we're going to do our corners. We save our corners for last, a half side at a time. There's only one staple there, so stretch and staple. And then we're going to come over here. Need to undo the staples. Don't undo them all. Don't do one half side at a time, right? And stretch. And I'm going to take this. One side over here, left. Let's just take a look at that to see how we're doing. Nice. Very good. Make sure you wipe away it's all your used staples as you go along, right? Stretch that. Now for the corner, and this corner is going to be a little rough because, um, wow, um, we need to get it tapped back here. Normally we don't do that. So let's just do it with a pleat this way, like a pleat, and a row of staples coming this way. And let's get that trimmed. We still have this piece here that, that has, to be cover has to be covering this. And then what I'm going to do is try to, let's see, get a couple of staples on this side. That could be a little tricky, right? I'm trying to make this into a regular pleat, but with enough fabric to cover back here. 
I have to be careful when I cover it. Watch what I do here. I'm going to get this nice. This has to be the part. I'm just going to lift this up to the camera. This is the part that has to be neat, right? So you can use a regulator to do what I just did with the scissors. So I'm really concentrating everything I have right into this area just to make sure it looks really good. As good as I can get it, right? I'm going to just hammer that down a little bit like that. And then I'm going to get a staple near the end like that, right? I might even get a couple over here, which are going to be seen. You can't do anything about that. Because if you recall, the other one was like that too. You saw staples from that side. But it's, you know, nobody's going to look under there. So now look, I got it, I got it to where I want it all the way over. And I think what I'm going to do is just staple the pleats down to there. And then I got so now what we're going to be doing is blind tacking. I have my top marked, so that's going to go this way. Blind tacking is just what it sounds like. You're tacking from the blind side. And we're going to get it prepped up there with a few staples, like so. And when we come around these corners, we're just going to put a little cut just to make it easier, but we don't want to cut all the way down. Just make it a little easier to transition around that corner. I'm not pulling this super tight. Transition around this corner by just putting a little tuck there, a little cut. It's going to come right around, right around there. Same thing here, just a little, little cut in there. Right. We're going to put our cardboard tacking tape in. Let's take a look at that to make sure we're on the right track. There we go. Cardboard tacking tape is what gives you that smooth line. That really smooth line. So, I actually need it. I have to stretch this out a little bit to get this in. To make sure that you're not pinching the fabric underneath because it has to be put on tight around the corners. Very good. So we got a nice, nice edge on the bottom there, and I'm feeling for staples to make sure there's no loose staples anywhere in there. That looks, it's really nice. Really good. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Um, this is just going to be uh, eventually what we're going to do is piece this one with just a pleat on this side. And now it's simply a matter of just, uh, because this, um, you know, you can if you want, you have a choice. You can fold this over and neaten this up a little bit if you like. So we can do that. We're just going to give it a little pull and do that. Actually, we can do a better job. Let's just put it this way. Let's give it a nice fold. And These little jobs can be fussy sometimes, you know. So you have to factor that in on your pricing sometimes. So the corner we're just gonna like that. So all of this is not seen. It's inside the it's like it's inside the gear section of the of the piece. But you know, hey, if you got enough fabric which I allowed for, you might as well give it a fold. Okay. 
So we have a little problem here. They had a very thin piece of fabric that they, I didn't like the way they did it, which they cut out. They just cut it to size and they glued it in there and it came off too easy for my liking, right? So this is the only problem with this is when you, when it's fully open, you see in that. So then I tried, I tried to do a pleat on the, on the, on the velvet and I didn't like that. It looked too bulky. It looked worse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my refinisher come in and just and stain this. I think that's a much better solution than to try to use fabric in an area like this. It's a real problem area. So I tried doing it the way they did and I don't like the fact that the, the um, velvet is fraying. Now if I had another fabric, at this, I probably would find a better way of gluing it and maybe this would have worked. But this is not going to work with the velvet to my satisfaction. So I'm going to hire a refinisher to come in here, maybe touch that up a little bit, which I'm not sure if I did or not. But touch this up and then that solves my problem. So there you have it. Let's just take a look at it on there. I'm really happy with the way this came out. You know, this is it full, full, fully up. Now I'm going to try to put it down to make sure it yeah, slides out nice. So what I'm going to do is, um, like I said, I'm going to have my refinisher come in and just refinish these edges up, and then I'm all done. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, please, especially if you've liked what you've seen to my channel, and that is BroadwayUpholsterySchool.com. Thanks. Yeah, you know, we, we try to do quality work here at the shop, and yikes!